All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today you can forget all your supercar channels and your drag racing and your lap times because I've got something way more exciting. What I've just bought is a 2010 Vauxhall Zafira 1.6 petrol for £1,000. Riveting stuff, this. You might be thinking, hang on a minute, Matt, that doesn't sound exciting at all. Well, you're wrong. What I've bought here is an Elite Zafira, an Elite, which means it's got leather. Wow. All jokes aside, they're actually not bad cars. They always sell really well. Keep this to yourself, but I actually prefer this era of Zafira than the one that came after. I'm hoping today with this 13-year-old Zafira that I can demonstrate how you can make money in the used car business. What I'm hoping is, like I say, I paid a thousand pounds for it. If I can keep my spend to around 500, then I should be able to get 2795, 2995 for it. So there should be a decent return. I don't want to get too carried away though, because Zafiras in general do have a tendency to be run on a shoestring. They just tend to be a used and abused family wagon that aren't treated with love and respect. We'll see, this one might be. And thinking about it, I know it's getting on in age now, so it's probably got a leaking rocker cover gasket. They're generally, touch wood, quite reliable. I've never had that many comebacks with them. Saying that, I do remember one occasion many years ago when I was at my old site, and I'd, I don't know, I'd been in business for about a year or so, and I had this Severa, quite a nice car, done 70 odd thousand miles, and I think I sold it for 2795. I sold it to a lady who had two or three kids and she traded in a, I think it was a 2005 or six Citroen C4 five door, not the Picasso, the smaller one, the uglier one, which was a horrible goldy color which had gone flat on some panels. And she wasn't entirely honest with the description. When I drove it after we'd done the deal, I should have driven it before, but you live and learn. When I drove it after we'd done the deal, I realized the turbo wasn't engaging. For the next six weeks or so, she kept calling every couple of weeks with issues. Minor issues, to be honest, on an older car, but issues that I rectified nevertheless. And then in the end, I got one of those, you know what's coming, don't you? You expect me to put my kids in that car and all that sort of stuff. So, in the end, I said, right, okay, bring it back. So a husband came back to my office, I think to kind of throw his weight around a little bit, let's be honest. And he said, right, I want my money back. Okay, fine, you can have your money back, but I'll tell you what, I'm not giving you your money back, we'll just undo the deal, because I've still got your Citroen. And he looked a little bit sheepish, and he said, you've still got it? Yeah, yeah, I've still got it. He wants a gold Citroen with no turbo. So he said, well, I don't want it back. So I said, well, tough luck. That's the only way you're going to get your money back, is if we completely undo the deal. I'm not being lumbered with an old Citroen and you get the full asking price back for the Zavira. That's not happening, sunshine. So in the end, I was quite happy to undo the deal. Then I rectified whatever the fault was. I can't even remember now. It wasn't anything major. Put the price up of the Zafira by 200 pounds to 2995. It sold immediately, and the couple who bought it, who were very nice in comparison, loved it. Never bought it back for any, any issues at all. It's a weird job this sometimes, and I think the moral of the story is, you just can't please some people. So don't bother trying. Anyway, let's go and have a look at this Zafira in question. I'll see you there. Well, we're here. It's silver with black leather interior. It is an Elite. It's got the nicer wheels on it. Oh yes, this is exciting. Joking apart though, it's even got the valance at the bottom. You know the skirt thing around the bottom of the bed? That's always missing on Zafira's. It's usually pulled off by some single mum outside the school gates in a onesie. On reflection, I could have phrased that better. Right, well, the tyres need air. I can tell you that for a kickoff. It looks like they've got about 12 PSI in both near side. That's what always confused me about these kinds of car buyers. They'll kick off Royal when something goes wrong with their car, you know, an engine light pinging on three weeks after they've bought it, and then I get accused of putting their kids in a death trap or whatever, and yet they're comfortable to drive around in something like that with eight PSI in three of the tyres. Bit hypocritical, isn't it, don't you think? That actually looks okay. It's D for D side. It's very dirty, very grubby actually, and it probably is a little kiddie abused thing, but the bodywork looks okay. Hmm. I think we've got some profit here. I don't want to speak too soon because it is in bay number 13. I'm lucky for some. Right, let me do a quick vehicle history check then using Car Vertical. Now it's really important that you do one of these before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorbike. It's really easy to use. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the VIN or the reg number. Now in this case, we know the reg number, which is Delta November 10, Victor Sierra X-Ray. Check vehicle. And this will give us a detailed report about the car's history. On top of that, it'll tell us whether it's ever been stolen, written off, had a mileage rollback, or has outstanding finance on it. 
If it's been for sale previously, sometimes it has photographs of the previous advert, so you can compare condition and you know spec and all that sort of stuff. It's quite interesting. And if it has been in an accident, sometimes it shows you photographs from the insurance company. So it's quite a handy tool, really. And if you want to save yourself 10% off each and every check that you do, then don't forget to use my promo code HIGHPEAK. That's HIGHPEAK, all one word. And you get 10% off. And the report is ready. So, view report. That is a Opal Zafira petrol, 2010. Odometer's fine, so it's never been clocked. No outstanding finance, and there's no recorded damage. Perfect. Oh, the mileage is good. So the last MOT, which was done in... Mm, it's got a short MOT. That's worrying, isn't it? The last MOT was done in February 23, and we're now in January 24. Time flies, doesn't it? It had done 79,000 miles at that point. And it does about four or five thousand miles a year. Hmm, that's not bad, is it? There was one year, it must have had a busy year here, between 14 and 16, it had done 32, then all of a sudden it had done 30, 309,000 miles, then back to 45. Now, anybody can see that that's obviously a typo. It was obviously 39, and some idiot MOT tester in a rush, while the phone's ringing and he wants to disappear for his dinner, has typed in 309. It's annoying that that can't be changed now because it might put somebody off. The average market price for such a vehicle is £4,200. Now, I was thinking that it could be a three grand car, this, but it might be a tad more. Mm, maybe not. I don't want to get carried away. But the miles are quite good. It's a multi-purpose vehicle. Oh, it's a 1.8. I told you this video was going to be exciting. Forget you supercars. I thought it was a 1.6. It's a 1.8. Be prepared to be pinned into your seat. Let's see if there are any advisor items on the last MOT then. There have been advisory items every single year. So if we go down to the last MOT then, there are a few advisory items. Surprise, surprise. Um, namely, tyres. Mm, it's no surprise, is it? If you run around with 8 PSI, you will wear through your tyres. Central front tyre. Central front tyre. Didn't know this was a five-wheeler. Near side rear tyre, offside front tyre, brake pads, and, and tyre. So it wants a set of tyres, potentially. Although, having said that, that was done almost a year ago. They might have been replaced. Let's go have a look, shall we? Okay, then. Sun's out today. Makes a nice change, doesn't it? Now, the first bit of good news is we've got one key, but we've also got the second key. Look at this. Although, it is a bit, it's a bit, sort of, limp. But, oh well. At least we've got it. And there she is, the Zephira Elite. Now, bodywork-wise, this does look very tidy, albeit a bit grubby. Now, the advised on tyres, now they look very old. This is going to cost me a set of tyres straight away. Look at all the crack in here in the sidewall. They're ancient. 2015, so nine-year-old tyres there. That's good, isn't it, when you're driving your family around? Lots of moss and stuff everywhere, but it will clean up. Up front, we've got a Uniroyal. They're quite a good brand, actually. And again, it's quite low and quite old. Hmm, 2019, so that's five years old. I mean, they are decent branded tyres, Michelin and a Uniroyal, so that's good. That's the Valance thing I was talking about, and it's always missing because people don't care, run up curbs outside Costa and Greggs. Usually Greggs. Got front fog lamps. This is a big spec, isn't it? This. Another matching Uniroyal. A very dirty wheel there, like someone's been heavy on the brakes. Brake discs look a bit corroded. A little bit of a dent there, but not too bad. It just wants a very good clean this, I think, and a set of tyres. Because they're all very old and very soft. Look at that. The state of this. Someone's run around in this. That's terrible. That should have been a fail, really. The worst bit, then, so far, I would say, is this. I mean, they've done a neat repair, haven't they? A little bit of cling film there. By the way, these lamp lenses are about £35 from eBay. So the fact someone's been out here with some cellar tape and cling film rather than just order one. Tells you a little bit about the previous owner, I think. Without wishing to be uh, disparaging, of course. The remote locking works. Let's have a look at the boot. Now, here's the thing. 
I've just spotted some carpet here from somebody's hall stairs and landing, an offcut, which is a bit of an old person thing to do, isn't it? I find. So maybe it's this, maybe this wasn't used as a family car at all, maybe it was just used as somebody's big practical car or van, because we've got some rubble here. It is all quite clean though on the bright side. We've got three layers of protection there. It's just dirty. I've had a dog in the back because I can't smell anything, but I can see wet noses up against the uh, the glass. Hmm. Now I know we're into four tyres, my £500 spend is looking a little bit less likely. Look at the leather look. Hmm. Yeah, they've had a dog in here. It's all scratched. Hmm. This isn't a four grand car. Got a little bit of a uh, hole there in the bolster. On this kind of car, I don't think I'd bother repairing it or replacing it. The rest of it's in decent nick, actually. And it is an elite spec, which means you get electric windows in the back, electric mirrors, auto lights, heated seats, and leather. Nerd, honestly. Well, apart from needing a very good clean and a fresh set of mats and a fresh set of tires, we're all right, I think. These always break, the glove boxes. I've repaired more of those than I uh, care to remember. Service history then, so we've got the owner's pack here. Put it out. Get my keys here. This might well have started out life as a rental car for six months, because they often did. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe not. Well, this is odd. Hmm. The service history, bear in mind this is a 2010 car. The service history starts in 2017 when it was seven years old in Wirral. 17, 19, 21, 22, and the cam belt's been done. That's good news. But where's the early history? Why is there no early history? How odd. What happens for the first seven years? I mean, I suppose thinking, thinking pragmatically and trying to keep upbeat, it's better to have recent history than old history, isn't it? At least I know that it has been serviced in the last few years. It's not bad going then, is it? Oh, not working here. We've got the wrong key. Oh, there we go. The inspection light's on. It's done 83,000 miles. We've got a little bit of fuel in. It's a five-speed manual. Any CDs? No CDs. No fun. They've got heated seats, though. What have they been listening to? Oldham Community Radio. It was on. We get to the tune here, the, the African tune I've got in here. Mm. Yeah. Right, so the African tune really is because... Um... Sounds riveting. We've got down here, like a little guardian angel. Protect me, my passengers, and all who I pass by with a steady hand and a watchful eye. Hmm. I bet the guardian angel is up there thinking, try and help me out here, love. Put some air in your tyres. Maybe replace them every, every nine years. Got an auxiliary jack there. That's quite good. Hmm, right. This isn't too bad, this car, really. Not bad at all. Not mint, but then it is a 13-year-old Zafira. I think I can do something with it. And it smells quite clean. Let's have a look under the bonnet. It's always on the other side, isn't it? Sod's law. Now the important thing with this is, like I say, they do suffer with poor rocker cover gaskets. So I'm looking for oil leaks, basically. It all seems quite dry, doesn't it, so far? Let's get this bonnet up. Do 
checking here for any mayonnaise. Now it is a cold day, so I expect to see a little bit, but mm, no, we're all good. We're all good here. That oil looks, doesn't look too filthy either, does it really? Right. This isn't too bad then really on the whole. I think we need to drive it, don't we? Right. Clutch feels all right. Sounds all right. It's not cammy or tappity or vibrating. Clutch is a little bit soft and the biting point's a little bit high. Not too bad. There was a recall for these about six years ago, for something to do with the um, air conditioning system, I think, because one caught fire, then all of a sudden everybody panicked and stopped buying Zaviras. It was the most knee-jerk reaction I think I've ever seen. Anyway, it was a free recall by uh, Vauxhall. And we're off. And bearing in mind now, I'm on very old, soft tyres. Say now, I've got my guardian angel. What am I worried for? Wonder if there's a guardian angel up there that will stop me by an old tat. Oh, AMG GT in grey. Mm, the clutch is all right. I think it's I think it's acceptable. It's probably the original clutch at eighty three thousand miles. On the bright side, I suppose a new clutch in a petrol car like this doesn't have a dual mass flywheel, so it won't be a massively expensive job. This is all right, you know. It's all right, get my heated seat on. I always find this really confusing. Just had a flashback, I bought one of these in Spain. 11 years ago, 12 years ago, same shape as this, but a 1.7 diesel. And I loaded up all my possessions in it and drove it back. I did that about three or four times that year when I was moving to the UK. And it was quite good. In fact, I got stopped by the Guardi Seville early one morning driving through Granada or somewhere. Proper like Guardi Seville roadblock, search my car, search all the box in the back. Anyway, but let me go. Nice little anecdote for you, that wasn't it? What I'm going to do with this then? I need to run it to my mechanics for a service MOT, four tyres, a new rear light lens, and hope they don't find a load of other stuff wrong with it as well. Tyres are going to cost me, they won't be expensive, will they? If I put some budget tyres on this, 50 quid a corner, 200 quid service will be 80 quid light lens will be 40 quid 320 MOT we might might be just still on target for my 500 pound spend maybe it'll be a close call this but I'm gonna try and do it I'm gonna try and do my 500 pound spend you've probably realized but this year I'm trying not to go off the rails with stuff see how that goes shall we I think it's also crying out for a new set of mats. That'll cost me 12 quid and a key repair. Right, okay, we might just 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 be slightly, ever so slightly over the 500 pounds, but be there or thereabouts, I think. As long as we are, there should be a good 12, 13, 1400 pounds profit here. I think first I'm gonna take it for a quick mini valet, spend 15 pounds on it, and get it looking a little bit, a little bit fresher. On the bright side, of course, it has had its cam belt done. So that's £350 I don't need to spend. So that's all good news. Granted, I've only been in it for five minutes, but there's no misfire. There's no warning lights on. We're all A-OK, -okay, really. Right, I think that's what I'll do. So give me, give me a week. I'm going to try and spin this one round quickly. Time is money, isn't it? And if I leave it sitting for a month, then that isn't great business. So I'm going to try and spin this one round quickly or quicker. Right, see you later on. Right, well I've got an update for you regarding my cheap Zephyra. It's not good news. Just ignore all this death row here, I've got lots of, uh, lots of problem cars backing up. In fact, should we get in? I love the snow, but I also detest it. Let's get this fired up then. 
Oh, heated seats, forgot about that. Right, my mechanic has given me a bit of a list. Oh, I've just realized. My little guardian angel wasn't looking out for me on this occasion, was it? I might keep that. I've got a feeling I'll use it in the near future. Right, my mechanic's list then is as follows. You ready for this? Washer's not working. Near side rear light unit, we knew about that. The horn doesn't work. This one's quite worrying. There's oil in the coolant tank. Who put oil in the coolant tank? I don't know. Uh, no, it's indicative of a um, quite a serious issue, that, I think. The near side front tyre, near side, offside front tyre, near side front tyre, got basically four tyres. They're all badly perished and below tread. Lovely. Then we've got the near side front and the offside front uh, dust covers, they need to be replaced. Front distant pads, rear distant pads. In addition to that, we've got an oil leak, in brackets, bad, from oil filter housing and sump. Great stuff. There's a fan belt noise, which we can, uh, we can hear. The exhaust is blowing from the exhaust midsection, apparently, and the exhaust back box has got holes in it. Quite a long, miserable list, that, isn't it? So what I've decided to do is, well, not bother with it. I thought, guys, I thought paying a thousand pounds for this and then spending a thousand pounds on it, then maybe selling it for three thousand pounds, would be quite good business in the grand scheme of things. But with that long list and the fact that I've got oil in the coolant, it just panics me. I could be into a very big bill and then sell it with no confidence at all, then it'll come back and then it'll just haunt me. So, I've got my sensible hat on again, sorry. I'm gonna to have to sell it as it is, I think. I'll do a very blunt advert. Sorry, got snow on your feet then. I'll do a very blunt advert and just try and get my money back or as close to. While this is warming up then, let me just show you around it briefly. It's a bit of a pity really, because I know it'll sell, but there's no point selling something if there's no profit, is there? What would you do? I think I've made the right decision here. Once again then, I've avoided a massive overspend. I quite like this. Right guys, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X as it's now called, and TikTok. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers guys. See you next time. I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs>